In this tutorial, we will see several examples demonstrating methods used to do frame rate conversions and how to deal with mixed formats in Premiere CC 2014. We will use Twixter, RealSmart Motion Blur Regular, and FieldsKit Deinterlacer plugins. Note, we did some tutorials for Twixter and Premiere, but some things have changed. The host application has greatly improved, and it's time for a refresh. Some of what we say here might not necessarily work in older versions of Premiere. For general Twixter usage, watch the Twixter Overview tutorials for Premiere. We rendered some footage with animated numbers to make this all more clear. I'll start with our 59.94 frames per second footage, and we can make a new sequence from clip. And go to Sequence sequence settings and change the time base or frame rate to 23.976. We can also make sure we're on square pixels for the aspect ratio and we'll change the display format to frames for the display. So now we have a 59.94 frames per second clip or 60p as input and a 23.976 or 24p sequence as output. You can see on the original footage, if I step through it frame by frame, it's playing each frame. Now if we step through each frame on the new sequence, that's 23.976, we see 0, 2, 5, 7, 10, 12. Some frames are plus 2 and some are plus 3. So this would look jittery at 24p playback. We want to create in between frames so it's more like 0, 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10, 12.5. They're equally spaced in time and we want the audio track to play back in sync and at proper pitch. In this case we're using the example of 60p to 24p but it would be the same for 60p to 25 frames per second. As you can see, if I change the sequence settings to 25, the result is 0, 2, 4, 7, 9, 11. Some are plus 2 and some are plus 3. You might wonder why this is different than a regular Twixter slow-mo. It's because we're changing the frame rate. Let's see how we do that. From the 59.94 movie, we can make a new sequence and we can call it Sequence 1. Then we can apply Twixter and change the speed to 250%. The way we get the percentage is 59.94 divided by 23.976 or 60 divided by 24. We can create another sequence that we can call Sequence 2. and make the frame rate 23.976. Now we unlink the audio and we set the premiere speed to 40% using the speed duration. And the way we get the percentage is again 24 divided by 60. So what we want is the video speed at 40% and the audio at 100% speed. Then we can trim the unused portion of the video to match the audio track length. The Queen Mary now is, uh, now is in Long Beach, California. In this next example, we have a 59.94 timeline with clips that are 59.94 frames per second. All but one, Perfect. that is. It's 24p. So we can easily convert the frame rate of our 24p clip to 60p. We'll be generating more frames than we started with, so we need to make the sequence longer in this case. This is really the only difference from the previous example going from 60p to 24p. So we can copy and paste our clip a couple of times so we have three instances of our clip. Now we can make a new sequence and add Twixter. We can change the speed to 40%, which is 24 divided by 60, and add this sequence to our edit. 
Now we can unlink the audio and change the speed duration of the video in Premiere to 250%, which is 60 divided by 24. The Queen Mary now is, uh, now is in Long Beach, California, and it's been there for many years. The Queen Elizabeth II is now in Dubai and it's been turned into a... So now we just need to drag the video to the last good frame and make the audio track match. In our next example, we'll talk about fields with Fields Kit. The editor has to decide at some point if they will edit at 1080i or 1080p. If someone chose to edit in 1080i, then they would set Premiere sequence settings to be field-based. You should then understand that in a field-based project, Twixter will process fields, but will render two fields per frame, all the fields, while Fields Kit will render both fields at the same timeline point making the result progressive, even if you're still 1080i out. Sometimes you might want a progressive look for a specific shot, particularly if you have text. And it's probably a good idea if you mixed formats to settle on one basis, all fields or all progressive. I will show you both these methods in this next example. First, we'll go to Sequence Settings set to custom mode and set to upper field first. 1080i is standardized to upper field first. We drop our 1080i movie in our sequence. Note, to make this tutorial easier to understand, we put 0 on first field and 0.5 on the second field. We can right mouse click in the viewer and go to the menu fields and select display first field and then display second field and then display both fields. Okay, we apply Fields Kit. By default, it's lower field first, so this is why we see 0 0.5. So we switch to upper field first, and now it's 0. If we switch to show first, second, or both, it's the same thing. There is another option for you here in timing mode. Motion Estimation Blend. That takes longer to render, but it might interest you. Now let's change the mode to two times duration, and now each frame is a field deinterlaced to full field. We have, in effect, doubled the duration, two times slow-mo. Now let's turn off Fields Kit and apply Twixter. If we set the input field to upper field, okay, now nothing happens. Why? As we said, Twixter is being told to render two fields, so two fields per frame, and we're at 100%, so nothing happens. Let's put the speed at 25% and set our options to display only the first field. Now advancing frame by frame, you see the first field, the first field blended with the second field, the second field, the second field blended with the next field, first field, and so on. Note, make sure your viewer is set to full resolution. Okay, now we're editing a progressive project with clips that have video fields. We'll start with our 1080i clip and we'll make a sequence from this clip. We can duplicate the clip so now we have two on the timeline. This is to pad it. Then we select all and nest the clip by selecting the clips on the timeline and right mouse clicking and selecting nest from the menu. The sequence created has fields. Now in our main sequence we can go to sequence settings, set to custom mode, and set to progressive. We can go to effects, video effects, and apply fields kit deinterlacer. We choose upper field first. If I advance frames, you can see we're playing frames. If we change the timing mode to two times duration and advance through frame by frame, now we're seeing the second fields. Now we can delete the fields kit and add Twixter so you can see the difference. Okay, now I can change fields to none. Now if I advance frames, we no longer see the fields. 
If I change the speed percentage to 50% in advanced frames again, you see now we're doubling the duration and seeing each field as a frame. Now both Fields Kit 2 times duration and Twixter 50% will produce the same result from the upper field sequence input. It's the case where the first mode in Fields Kit and Twixter are the same. We're in a progressive sequence, so there's one frame rendered per frame. For this next example, we'll start with 120 frames per second clip. It's actually been stored in the clip as 24p in this case. Note, some cameras allow you to set that, others provide the actual frame rate. We can interpret footage by going to Modify, Interpret Footage, and make it 120 frames per second because it was shot at 120 but saved as 24. Now we make a new sequence from our clip. You can see the properties for our clip here in the Info tab and it's 120 frames per second. And if we play it, it looks normal, but it's 120 frames per second. If we want this sequence to play normal speed at 24p, we'll need to skip 4 frames every 5. The first method I'm going to show you is by adding Real Smart Motion Blur so this looks better. We can make the motion blur 1 and play it. You can see the motion blur. If I turn it on and off, you can see the difference. We can create a new sequence and go to Settings and go to Custom for Editing Mode and make the time base 24 frames per second. I can make it 1280 by 720, make the aspect ratio square pixels, and set the fields to no fields. Now I can drop the walking 120 sequence in with the Real Smart Motion Blur on it into our new 24p sequence. What we're doing here is skipping frames but adding motion blur to simulate the 24 frames per second look. Notice with Real Smart Motion Blur it works a lot better to do the effect in the 120 frames per second sequence and then drop the 120 frames per second sequence into the 24p sequence as you have a lot more information. Now we'll see another way to do this by using Twixter and motion blur compensation. I can duplicate my 120 frames per second clip and rename it so we'll keep it separate. I'm just going to add a 24 to the end. So in this case we can modify interpret footage to 24 frames per second. We'll make a new sequence from clip and apply Twixter. Okay, in the effect controls for Twixter we'll change the speed to 500% because we divide 120 frames per second by 24 frames per second, the original speed by the new speed. We also change the motion blur compensation value. I'll make it 1. Why am I not getting the same blur amount? In one case, the comparison from the original material had 5 times more frames, 120 divided by 24, so a lot less motion between each frame. We can readjust though. Okay, so the reason we shot 120 frames per second is because we wanted to do a slow-mo at some point. Let's see in this last example how we can see how to animate the speed starting at 500%, which would give us what looks like 24 frames per second, and then ramp the speed down even slower. It would be nice if we could have a nice graph editor to make some precise speed ramp animation. So what we can do first is interpret the footage to 24 frames per second. Next we can select Clip, Replace with After Effects Composition. Now in After Effects we can change to Frame Mode to make the frame numbers precisely at particular frames. We can add Twixter and go to the Effect Controls and use the Frame Number option. At frame 0 we can set a keyframe of zero. We can go to the last frame and set it to frame 1700. Now if we want the first 100 frames to play as though it was shot at 24 frames per second, we need to make the footage five times faster. So at frame 
100, we can set a keyframe to 500. Now if we want the footage to slow down, we can go to frame 450, for example, and set a keyframe to 765. Now we can select that keyframe and change it to Bezier, or whichever type of interpolation we want. Just so you can see that the reason we came into After Effects is so we can have more precise keyframe animation for speed ramping. Now you have seen several scenarios to give you a base so you can figure out which method works best for your situation.